Welcome back everybody inside the Anatomy Lab. In today's episode, we are going to be diving deeper into the human walk cycle. As you can see here, we are starting out with the side view and we can observe how the bones form joints. Maybe this already gives you a better understanding of how they work closely together as a unit. Later on, we'll introduce more muscle layers and of course, we are going to look at the movement from the front and the back perspective. I think we are about to get into the second round of our little stroll with our 3D model. And as you can see, I've added the first layer of muscle, which should you give you a better idea of how the muscles are moving our bones so we are able to move forward in space. Please remember, it's possible to zoom into the video in case you want to see more muscle groups in more detail. Maybe you also want to try this out with the glute area and you can tell me what you think about the muscle deformations that I animated so far. I really always appreciate all your feedback and it really helps me to improve the skeleton's behavior. Here's the final round from the side view, showcasing all the muscles working together. Upon reviewing it, I'm quite satisfied on how this walk cycle has shaped out. The only aspect bothering me is the way the skeleton plants the foot in the front. It looks kind of clumsy. I'm thinking about smoothing this out in my next update. Additionally, there's something about the posture of the torso that is not sitting right with me. Although I cannot quite put my finger on it. It's also looking kind of stiff. Maybe you have an idea or thought what I should improve about this. Okay, now let's take a look from the front. Talking about enhancements, I'm really eager to hear your thoughts on the pelvic movement and the counter movement in the shoulders. Is it too much sway or do you think I hit the sweet spot? While I was making this animation, I realized how much personality and individuality walking truly embodies. I bet you've also got those friends whose walk you can spot from a mile away. They've got that unique stride. For me, now walking has become like a movement fingerprint. Same thing as before, for the next round I've added a whole bunch of muscles. But in this case I left out the quads on purpose. I wanted you to get a good look at the adductors and I wanted to make you think about how they work in something basic as walking. And let's not forget to appreciate the plain view of the psoas muscle. It still amazes me to see how it connects the spine and the leg. No wonder that the psoas muscle is so popular in sports, martial arts, and of course, in all kinds of healing arts. Okay, moving on. Here we have the front view and you can again see how all the muscles work as a unit. While we are watching the skeleton come towards us, I want to point out that even with just a model, we can gather substantial information by observing its walking pattern. This observation also holds real life application especially for professionals like trainers or physiotherapists. Simply watching a person walk provides valuable insights, revealing muscle imbalances, offering cues about energy levels and more. So it really pays off to observe the walking patterns of your clients. So here we go to the last few of the bones from the back perspective. And you can see the skeleton shaking the tail feather. And also you can see the shoulder blades counter moving. I wanna bring to your attention that the walk of the skeleton is completely balanced out. It literally is copied from the right to the left side. So if I were to make this more human, I would have to add imbalances, like a subtle difference in step length or a muscle imbalance, like a very tight hip rotator that could cause one of the feet to be turned to the outside. In the next view, the hip rotators are visible, and this offers insight in how they might influence the positioning of the foot. Consider a scenario where the piriformis is exceptionally tight and take into account its attachment on the greater trochanter. In such a case, you can envision how the tightness of the piriformis could contribute to an outward rotation of the foot. Again, I want to remind you that you could zoom into the piriformis area a little bit and this maybe give you a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Okay, let's move on to the last round. We can finally see all the muscles from the back perspective. As you can see, I have added the hamstrings, the calves, the glutes, the lats and the traps. I'm surely going to revisit this walk cycle in the future and I'm planning on introducing some troubles so we can see what bad posture, for example, can do to the walk cycle. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to take this little stroll with me through the virtual realm of anatomy. And I hope to see you soon back inside the lab. Have a good one.